Welcome to the Ink Ribbon Halloween Special. Ink Ribbon. It's Halloween, and it's time for the spooky and the scary. Now, obviously, you guys love Resident Evil and Silent Hill and a lot of other games that are in that style, that classic, delicious survival horror genre. But there's also a lot of games out there that we don't know about because we never played them. So a couple months ago, I asked you guys on the community tab if there were any survival horror hidden gems that maybe people didn't know about, and a lot of you replied. 147 comments to be exact, which is great. Thank you. This list isn't in any particular order, but I did put the higher voted ones towards the top because a lot of you guys were so passionate about them. And with that, here is our list of the top 10 survival horror hidden gems. Number 10. X-Files Resist or Serve. We all know that games based on movies are bad and games based on TV shows are even worse. But every once in a while, we get a good one, and this is one of those good ones. So I've had this game on my radar for a long time and I really want to play it, but the reason I haven't is because I'm actually watching The X-Files right now for the first time and I hate spoilers, so I'm waiting until I finish the series to play it. Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny reprised their roles, which is pretty cool, and I just felt that it was worth mentioning. Witch hunt, Scully. And I assume there's a reason other than one of the girls wears a pentagram to make you believe they both practice witchcraft. Those fingers in my hair, that sly come hither stared. Do I have to recite the rest of the lyrics? I got the joke, Mulder. Come on, Scully, you know the words. Sing with me. Mulder. X-Files Resistor Serve plays like any other survival horror game with classic cameras and third-person controls, but also offers a lot of variety from what I can see. I'm really looking forward to playing this, and thankfully I'm almost through the series, so it'll be sooner rather than later. Keep an eye out for that Let's Play. Number 9 Countdown Vampires <laughs> The GameStop review is summed up by the following. The game is flawed on so many levels that only the most dedicated survival horror fan might get some enjoyment out of it. Perfect. The game is regarded as a Resident Evil clone, but it brings some really interesting things to the table. First of all, a weapon you can use is a dart gun, which puts enemies to sleep so you can get by them. And another one using an item called White Water will restore their humanity. Imagine walking around Raccoon City in the old Resident Evil games with these mechanics and turning zombies back into humans. It's definitely worth checking out if you like classic Resident Evil. Number 8 Echo Knight 1 and 2 So I've played Echo Knight on the PS1, but I never knew that there was a sequel until you guys let me know, so I'm going to include them together. The first game plays like a first-person view where you can walk around and interact with things. Imagine classic Resident Evil, but in first-person. Since it's story-based, I won't spoil too much, but basically you jump around through time and deal with a lot of spooky ghost stuff. If you didn't know about its sequel, Echo Knight, Lord of Nightmares, don't feel bad. It was not released in the US for some reason, but you European gamers probably know it, so you can let me know in the comments. Number 7 Martian Gothic Unification I played this one fairly recently and honestly, it wasn't the best game. It felt like classic Resident Evil, but it also had some of the problems that clones like Parasite Eve and others had where map layouts were both too confusing and too big, and the game design could have been better. Aside from that, it is an enjoyable survival horror game. You play as three characters simultaneously, kind of like Resident Evil Zero, but with three characters. They are sent from Earth to a Mars base, which is of course overrun by... Uh, alien zombies, I guess? They're like reanimated people acting like monsters, and unlike zombies in Resident Evil, they aren't easy to kill. There are far less enemies in this game than most survival horror, but those enemies are tough and feel like big obstacles. As for the rest, you'll just have to play it for yourself to see. Number 6 Extermination
Now this is an interesting game. It plays like a less polished Resident Evil 4, but this time you're killing some monsters that are kind of like a mix of insects, aliens, and zombies. A unique feature to this is an infection meter, just like Outbreak, which is cool because a lot of things like walking through puddles can increase it. The con for this pro though is the gameplay design which is unfortunately flawed. The game, like Resident Evil 4, focuses a lot on action for combat, but the game has limited ammo, which means you can just simply run out and be screwed. Aside from that, those deliciously crisp PS2 graphics and gameplay make this worth a try. Number 5 Fear Effect Coming out towards the end of the PS1's lifespan caused this game to fly under the radar for a lot of people, but it is an amazing game. For the most part. So I actually recently bought this because I was able to find it at an amazing price. Uh, at Book Off, it was $10.99. Normally this goes for like, I don't know, like 80 bucks used, I think. I'm not sure, but either way. I was like, yeah, like, oh, uh, oh, <laughs> maybe it wasn't that recent because it's pretty dusty. Anyway, here is the formula for Fear Effect. Take the controls and camera from Resident Evil, the aesthetics of Ghost in the Shell, and the action from The Matrix, and add a tiny sprinkle of Silent Hill, and presto, you've got Fear Effect. Honestly, the visuals and the story are the real reason to be here. The gameplay is kind of frustrating since it's a trial and error learning experience, but it makes it that much more satisfying when you finally get past the challenge. Honestly, this is a game you could just watch all the cutscenes on YouTube and experience it that way just fine. Or maybe watch someone like me do a let's play of it because, I mean, I did rebuy it after all. Number 4 Deep Fear Deep Fear is pretty easy to describe. It's Resident Evil on a boat. Well, it's more than a boat. There's also a submarine and a fueling research facility. You know how it goes. But as far as being a Resident Evil clone, this is a really good one. Chief! <laughs> what? What's going on? April Fools! Ha 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 ha! It actually got a lot of really good reviews at the time and did well among gamers. One really cool thing about this game that stands out is that even though there are zombies or mutants that you have to kill or avoid, there's also a bigger enemy that's constantly a threat. And that enemy is... Oxygen. Your air meter is constantly depleting and you have a lot of ways to fill it, ranging from oxygen rooms, oxygen boxes, or air systems, and even oxygen grenades because it was the 90s and games did whatever the hell they wanted. Man, I need to add that to my list of Let's Plays too. Number 3 Dementium Growing up on survival horror games, you tend to play them on certain systems. PC, PlayStation, Xbox, they all had a ton of scary games. Even the GameCube had some good ones. But this entry surprised me because I didn't know about it until you guys told me and I was shocked to find out that Dementium is a survival horror game for the DS. This game is really impressive because it showed off the capabilities of the system really well. And let me clarify, this is on the DS, not the 3DS. The visuals are a perfect blend of Resident Evil and Silent Hill. I mean, look at this menu. It plays like most first-person horror games, so think of like having a little amnesia game in your pocket. The number one complaint across the board is that the game is really short, but for some people, like myself, that's actually a good thing because I've got a lot of games to play. Number 2 Clock Tower 3 oh. uh. Okay. I really didn't want to put this game on the list because I have some serious issues with it, but we're going to get to that. I went back and reviewed the game to realize that it was a little better than I thought. 
Previously, all Clock Tower games were point and click style, which were always really slow and outdated, especially for a horror game. This game plays like a modern day third person game, and I would say it's like Devil May Cry and Resident Evil combined, but without any action. During the game, and its completely wacko story, you progress in sections, with each one having its own boss chasing you. You have no weapons and it's purely a run for your life kind of game. But running too much or getting too close to enemies can trigger panic mode, where Alyssa suddenly controls like she drank an entire bottle of wine, and if she gets too scared she will sit on the floor and wait to die. Which I know it sounds like I'm complaining, but it really does add to the fear and intensity of the game. But now I do have to do a little bit of complaining because here's the thing. This game has the most insane difficulty curve of any game I have ever played, ever. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm all right. I'm good. The whole game is slightly challenging, not too easy, not too hard, and it's actually an enjoyable horror game. And then you get to the final boss, and it is the most difficult Dark Souls bullshit ever. I remember it completely ruining the game so much that I never wanted to play it again. But I decided to include it on this list because so many of you mentioned it. I hope you're happy. Number one. Cold Fear. Okay, I know I said Resident Evil on a boat already, but this time it's literally Resident Evil on a boat. Resident Evil 4, to be precise. The enemies are even controlled by a parasite, but these are much more interesting than Las Plagas, in my opinion. Exos, or exomutants, come in different forms and vary in abilities. Some can see in the dark, some can turn invisible, and some are just really big. Along with this is the fact that the boat you're on is constantly rocking back and forth, making it difficult to aim and adding to the pressure and tension. This game is really short as well, but it's worth a play for so many reasons. Unfortunately, it came out the same year as Resident Evil 4, and as we all know, it was blown out of the water. No pun intended. And it was a huge commercial failure. There was even a company that bought the film rights to the game, but after it only sold 70,000 copies, they decided not to pursue it any further. And that concludes the Ink Ribbon Halloween special of the Top 10 Survival Horror Hidden Gems. A very special list because we made it together. Now I know there were a lot more games mentioned, but you're going to have to wait until we do this again next year. I hope everyone has a fun and safe Halloween, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to my bronze, silver, and gold Patreon supporters. Thanks to you, I can make videos without worrying about demonetization and grow my channel faster.